Hi guys! Um, so a couple months ago I made a video, uh, new bike day for my Trek Top Fuel 8. Um, I just kind of went over the bike, showed the different components, explained why I picked uh, this model that I did. Uh, and the video got a lot of interest. Um, so it's a couple months later now, I've got a lot of good riding on, on the bike, and I wanted to make more of a review video to talk about what I think about the bike so far. Um, Fortunately, uh, winter has come and it's snowed and uh, there will be no more riding, so about two months was all that I was able to get. Uh, so that's why we're filming this in a parking garage now. Uh, but you gotta make what, what, do with what you got. Okay, so um, I'll start by going over the individual components and how I like them, and then I'll talk about the bike as a whole. Um, so I guess we'll start at the front and work our ways back. Um, oh shit, if I start at the front, do I do the tires first or last? Oh, man. Okay, cut. Okay, so after um, consulting with my filmer, it is indeed appropriate to do the wheels at the beginning, not the end, even though they're on both ends of the bike. So, um, so actually, I don't even have the wheels that came on this bike. Um, I have my own, uh, I already had these. Uh, the, the wheels that came on the bike were nice, but I already had these, so they're carbon. Uh, we are one uh, rims, lace the Industry 9 hubs, so I figured why not throw those on um, to save some weight. Uh, the, width, the, the rims are 25 millimeters wide, um, so I thought maybe some more narrow tires might suit, suit them better. Uh, I could save some more weight there, so I put on these 2.25 uh, racing rims. Um, so this was a big mistake. Um, the bike just wants to be ridden really aggressively, and uh, with these tires, they just don't have enough volume. You have to run a super high PSI, and I was still hitting my rims, getting pinch flats. Um, as soon as the spring rolls around and I'm gonna redo my ceiling, I'm gonna put the, uh, the nice 2.4s that came on the bike on, and uh, I'll be able to see how the, those are, and I think it'll be a lot better. Um, so moving along, so this has the 120 millimeter SID, which is a really nice light fork. Um, great, lots of adjustment, but uh, as you maybe have heard on the internet, um, these forks are riddled with bushing play problems. Um, and mine was no stranger to that. So uh, unfortunately, you'll know you have this problem. It'll basically feel like a loose headset. Um, you'll go to you know pull up on your bars, and you'll just feel kind of like a clunk. Same with any time you know your front wheel gets airborne or, or even just unweighted um, going over different types of terrain. Yeah. So uh, going back in previous years, uh, a couple other bikes have, have had the 120 mil sit on them for a while now, like the uh, Transition Spur and the Specialized Epic Evo. So I went back in those forums and saw and like, yeah, it's, it's kind of sad. Tons of people have, have this problem with their sits. Um, one thing, and one theory though, is that um, it's just due to not enough oil in the fork. Um, RockShox is kind of uh, known for not, not putting enough oil in their forks or being very inconsistent with it. Um, one way you can find out if this is your issue, flip your bike upside down. All the oil that's in the lowers, it'll start to come up into the bushings and then into your foam ring. Um, leave your bike like that for like five minutes and see if the bushing play is gone. If, if it is, then hopefully it's just an oil issue. Um, this seemed to be the case for me, so I popped my lowers off and my friend took drain the oil out. Um, it was supposed to be 10 mil in each leg. It seemed like it was a little bit less than that maybe, but it wasn't too bad. Anyways, uh, put new oil in, uh, new grease uh, on the wiper seals, did it back up, and it's been fine since then. So fingers crossed, I'm praying I don't have any more issues with it, because other than that, it's a really nice one. Um, anyways, moving on. Uh, so it's got the knock block headset, which is kind of just a pain in the butt, because um, like, honestly, on a bike like this, you're never gonna have your bars so low that you're gonna be hitting your brake lever when you, on your top two. Like you would have to have, you'd have to have like all these spacers gone and you know, uh, I can see on a really purebred cross country bike, you need that obviously, but on a down country or trail bike, nobody's gonna have their bars that low. You get rid of the knock lock. Cause it's really a pain cause if you wanna get a different stem, you have to go and you have to file these things off. Same with if you want to, uh, run different headset spacers, it, it's kind of annoying, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, it, it, the headset doesn't come loose, it doesn't affect the riding, you don't notice it when you're riding, so it's just a pain if you ever want to change stuff. Um, not too much to say about the seven bars, they're fine. Um, 
One small thing I really love are these Bontrager lock-on grips. Um, I come from like a BMX background and I, one thing I've always loved is how soft and tacky BMX grips are. And I've never found lock-on grips that are, that are like that. And uh, these, these basically feel like BMX grips, so soft, like you could not wear gloves and it'd be, it'd be fine. Uh, so moving on to the frame, so I'm 5'10", I'm right between the medium and the large, and I decided to go with the, sorry, the medium large and the large, and I went with the large. Um, it's nice and roomy, but I like the feel, it is pretty long. Um, put a, uh, a Top Gun sticker on it. I uh, hope, hope you guys have seen this movie and you know what I'm talking about here. As soon as I knew I was getting a Top Fuel, I ordered this, this sticker, because obviously I think I'm pretty funny, and I hope you do too. Um, other really cool thing I forgot to show in my other video about the frame is the internal storage. You've probably seen this already, but um, so it's just a little lever here. You pop off the water bottle cage. They give you this awesome tool belt to um, to st store all your tools in there. I've got it like really wedged in there, full of tools, so I'm not going to pull it out. But it goes all the way down there, uh, and then I still got some room for uh, snacks and stuff in there on top of that, which is pretty nice. Only thing is like you know. I think I'd probably put snacks in my jersey when I'm riding because it's a pain to take this off and you have to take your water bottle off. But for things you're not going to access as much, like tools, definitely a great place for it. Um, so we got a, a, a Trans X dropper. Um, I've had these in the past. Um, I, I'm not a really big fan of them. The levers kind of suck. And the, uh, my other Trans X was pad. This one seems better so far. I'm hoping that's because it's, it's the increased diameter is 34.9, I believe, uh, which they say it has more room for internals, there's more room for the, the air. So hopefully that's why it's better and it's, it's not gonna start falling apart on me. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, um, I talked about the shock before in the other video, but it's nice that all of the, all of the frames basically have the same um, RockShox Super Dogs Ultimate. Um, it means they're all tuned the same way, which is great. And then the drivetrain, we have a mix of kind of XT for the shifter derailleur, uh, and then SLX on some other stuff to save some save some money. Uh, this is my first time with the Shimano Hyperglide Plus, and oh, it's just so nice and smooth. You know what they say about being able to shift under load like when you're climbing and stuff, it's true. Um, I, coming from SRAM, uh, definitely really prefer this. Uh, that's great. So we've gone front to back. Um, oh, and, and the brakes, uh, plenty of stopping power. Um, they're four piston, uh, just some Shimano's. Uh, and yeah, they, I, I basically, uh, yeah. So I've been riding the bike on enduro trails, actually mostly because uh, my enduro bike's been uh, uh, needing to get serviced and I haven't had time to work on the fork yet. So I've been riding this bike probably on harder stuff than it's meant for, and it's been holding up really well. Um, the suspension is, is the brakes, like I said, uh, lots of power. The suspension is really nice uh, and progressive. The rear shock tune is perfect. I found the fork, though, did not match the progressivity of the shock, um, and it bottomed out a lot, and, I, and then I would have to set too much pressure, and I wouldn't have enough sag. So I added one volume spacer um, to the fork, and I feel like it matches the tune of the shock better and it rides a lot nicer than that. If you never added a volume spacer, super simple. You just pull off your air cap here, let all the air out, and it's basically, it just takes up a little bit of space in there. Um, and it will make your, your fork stiffer at the end of the travel without making the beginning of the travel um, less plush or sensitive. Yeah, so that's the bike so far. Oh, and... Uh, one other nightmare I forgot to mention that I, I think I'd taken out, tried to uh, ring from my memory, uh, that I, I'm not a fan of, is this bike has SRAM's new universal derailleur hanger. You can see here. Now, uh, it's a cool concept. What I don't like is that the whole thing is made out of plastic, other than this bolt. The actual inside, what goes inside the, um, the dropout is plastic, and the threads are plastic. And it says you can do it up to 25 newton meters, and it's plastic threads. And it's absolutely ridiculous. You should never, if you get one, do not do up your, do not do up your derailleur hanger that tight. Um, I used the torque wrench, and mine snapped around like 15 newton meters. And honestly, 
I saw it was it was a nightmare. I had a broken derailleur hanger stuck inside my drop out because the thread snapped. There's no way to get it out, nothing to grab. Um, I spent hours trying to get it. I ended up having to take it to the dealer and they had to drill it out. Um, and then derailleur hangers are on like an eight month back order or something from Shrams. I had to go buy my own. Um, I'm still getting one warranty, but anyways, um, do not do up your derailleur hanger to the, the recommended torque spec. Uh, I don't know what they were thinking, but I'd say like eight new meters max is probably what you should do for it. Um, anyways, thank God I didn't ruin the frame. Um, yeah, that's, that's another grievance I have for the bike. Other than that though, um, uh, once I got the suspension dialed, it's really nice. Um, it has a, has a lot of anti-squat, climbs really nice and fast, feels nimble. Um, and I've ridden through some really rough stuff and it's been great. Um, I really recommend the bike for sure. Uh, I'm really excited to ride it a lot more next year. Um, so. Uh, yeah, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, let me know in the comments if you've bought this bike already, if you're thinking of buying one. Uh, if you are, what models are you looking at? Um, and if you want to see some more videos of me riding the bike or other things like this, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. That'll help me out a lot. Uh, thank you. Happy trails.